The Boston Bruins have made their first move of the 2022 offseason, re-signing Jakobs Borrell to a two-year contract extension. Going to break down the details and talk about what it means on this Bonus Monday episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to a postscript episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Already jumped on this morning to talk about Game 7 loss to the Carolina Hurricanes and whether or not Patrice Bergeron may call it quits. He's saying it's too soon. Catch all the details on that episode in your feeds this morning. Uh, But I wanted to jump on and quickly talk about the two-year contract extension signed by Jacobs Borrell this morning. First, a quick reminder to subscribe to Locked On Boston Bruins on your favorite podcast app on YouTube. You can find the podcast at Locked NHL Bruins on both Instagram and Twitter. And you can find me, my hockey tweets, dad jokes, at Ian C. McLaren. Now, the uh, team announced this morning that Jakobs Borrell signed a two-year contract extension with an annual cap hit of $1.1375 million. It's Borrell, 25 years old, played 10 games for the Bruins this season with three assists to his credit. He's appeared in 54 career NHL games with the Bruins with 12 assists. Uh, He's also played 182 games for Providence, 11 goals, 46 assists for 57 points. The Czech Republic native was, I guess it's Czechia now, uh, was drafted by the Bruins in the first round, 13th overall back in 20. 15, of course, part of the infamous 2015 draft class for the Boston Bruins. Now, what's interesting about this signing is that Zborl could have become an unrestricted free agent on July 1st. Unrestricted free agent. As a Group 6 UFA. According to Puckpedia, a player becomes a Group 6 UFA if they're 25 years old have completed three or more professional seasons, contract expiring, and has played less than 80 NHL games. And Zborl fit in all of those categories after being injured this past season. He tore his ACL and was unable to complete what had become a pretty promising regular season campaign for Zborl. It's also believed that he had, along with Jake DeBrusque and now traded Zach Sinishin, previously um, requested a trade from the Boston Bruins a few years ago, or a couple years ago at the very least. But for the time being, he's sticking with the Boston Bruins for the next couple of seasons. Now, he was one of two unrestricted free agents on the blue line for the Boston Bruins, the other being Josh Brown, who was acquired at the deadline from the Ottawa Senators. We'll talk about the implications of the signing here in a moment, but first, a quick word about Bet Online. BetOnline has you covered with all the latest odds, props, info when it comes to wagering on the NBA, the NHL, Major League Baseball, UFC, even some NFL futures they have over there already. You can um, visit their website, use your mobile device to sign up for a free account, learn all about the trends in action at BetOnline, where the game starts. Built Bar also has a birthday cake puff bar that you do not want to miss. It's a protein bar covered in 100% chocolate, infused with marshmallow, 
and it only has 150 calories and gives you 17 grams of protein only nine grams of sugar as well this limited time flavor is an amazing option and it's waiting for you right now at built.com can't guarantee whether or not it will be available tomorrow because these things are flying off the shelves go to build.com use promo code locked 15 to get 15 percent off your order that's promo code locked 15 for 15 percent off at built.com looking at boston's cat friendly chart they now have Seven defensemen signed through next season. Sorry, eight defensemen signed through next season. That includes all six who played in Game 7 on Saturday. Charlie McAvoy, Brandon Carlo, Matt Grizzlick, Derek Forbort, Mike Riley, Hampus Lindholm. Grizzlick, sorry, was a healthy, well, maybe not necessarily a healthy scratch, he was scratched from Game 7, reportedly dealing with a shoulder injury that had been bothering him all season long. Uh, so Carter Clifton was in the lineup as well. With Zborl having been signed, you have eight defensemen under contract at the NHL level for next season. You also have... At the AHL level, a guy like Jack Ashan, who proved in his time with the Bruins this season that he can handle NHL minutes. He's a restricted free agent. All of that sets the table for a possible move to be made by general manager Don Sweeney or somebody else if he's let go or not extended. At some point this offseason, you know, Charlie McAvoy, his $9.5 million contract kicks in uh, next season, as does Hampus Lindholm's $6.5 million deal. Uh, you have Brandon Carlo signed for quite some time. I don't think they will move him. Matt Grizzlick, you would think, is a top four staple, but... It's likely to come down to Grizzlick, Mike Riley, or Derek Forbort, who is moved. You have to think that they saw this playoff performance and have valued Forbort as a key player on the penalty kill, a bottom three, sorry, bottom pairing defenseman. So it's probably going to come down to Grizzlick or Riley. Grizzlick probably has greater trade value, and rightfully so. He's a better defenseman than Mike Riley. But perhaps they keep Riley and allow him and Sborrell to fight it out for the top four pairing. Or you go Linho McAvoy, Riley, Carlo, Forbort, Zborl on the right side. At any rate, the Bruins are now have a very full complement of defensemen ready to play at the NHL level. That's assuming Brown is gone, allowed to walk as a free agent. You put hit, put Jack Ashan up there. Uh, they could use some more help on the right side. So either. Zborl battles with Grizzlick, Riley, Forbort for time on the left side, or he's the fourth defenseman on the right side, third defenseman on the right side. Connor Clifton bumps down. Uh, that remains to be seen. But with Boston extending Zborl, there's a glut of defensemen there, and it likely means that a trade will be made at some point. I do like this signing very much. I think Zborl was coming into his own as an NHL defenseman. You know, you talk about the 2015 NHL draft. You look at the rankings heading into that deal or heading into that selection process. Zborl wasn't a reach. He was ranked higher than a guy like Thomas Shabbat who was selected after him. DeBrusque wasn't really a reach either. 
Uh, Sinitian was the reach, of course. That did not pan out well. But Zboro was properly rated. Debrusque may be a bit high. We'll have to see what becomes of him this offseason if there's some trading. But Zboro is a good, promising, young defenseman. And he would have been an important part of this team had he not suffered that uh, season-ending ACL injury. So I like this signing. There will be some dominoes, and we'll see how those shake out here. Um, Bruins players meeting with the media today, getting through some of the minor guys. Anton Bleed, a pending UFA. He wants to be in the NHL, kind of lamenting a lack of playing time this season. We'll see what happens there, and we'll recap everything we learned from the Bruins here today as they address the media, but I wanted to get on and talk about this Boral deal, which could have some ripple effects, or probably will have some ripple effects through the offseason. So that's your bonus content for this Monday. Do follow the Locked On NHL podcast uh, for your next listen, talking about all the big stories over the weekend. And please do subscribe here to the Locked On Boston Ruins for all the latest on the black and gold.